former President Donald Trump, did some good things. I, I believe he's being treated unfairly by the justice system. I don't like the fact that Democrats cheated in some areas during the last election. I'm with you on all those things. And I want the president to receive any vindication he truly deserves. And I don't like it that they're taking him off the ballot in Colorado. I think that's awful. Or is it Maine is the new one. They took him off the ballot there. I don't like that. I don't think he should be taken off the ballot. But he still does not meet the minimum standard for leadership described in Exodus 18.21 based upon his public statements and his behavior. So why did I bring up Donald Trump? Well, when you have an incrementalist bill that ultimately doesn't end all the abortion, you can have a guy who has no intention of stopping abortion. You can have someone who's pro-abortion and pro-life, both supporting the same bill and being one being naive, the other being disingenuous. I try really hard to never condemn people unfairly on this issue, but there are times when it becomes too obvious to ignore. And former President Donald Trump has actively criticized incrementalist abortion bills, but not because he demands the abolition of all baby murder as commanded by God in the Sixth Commandment, thou shalt not murder. Now, the former president specifically criticized the Florida State heartbeat bill because he claims it stops too many abortions. I sat and watched his publicly accessible interview on NBC's Meet the Press with Kristen Welker, and it really frustrated me. I mean, DeSantis is willing to sign a five-week and six-week ban. Would you support that? You think I, that I goes think what he far? did is a terrible thing and a terrible mistake. If a federal ban landed on your desk, if you were reelected, would you sign it? I would sit down with both sides and I'd negotiate something and we'll end up with peace on that issue for the first time in 52 years. We're going to agree to a number of weeks or months or however you want to define it. There is a number and there's a number that's going to be agreed to. And Republicans should go out and say the following, because I think the Republicans speak very inarticulately about this subject. I watched some of them. I said, you, you, other than certain parts of the country, you can't, you're not gonna win on this issue, but you will win on this issue when you come up with the right number of weeks. So the conclusion was former President Trump might support banning abortion after 16 weeks, but he's much more likely to support a ban if it's even later than 16 weeks after the new life has begun, but not too much later because that's what Democrats do. And we can't be like Democrats. So they wanna, they wanna let babies be killed later. We need to be uh, only willing to kill them sooner. That, that's the Trump position. Worst of all, Trump communicated he absolutely would not support ending abortion completely. And he made it very clear Governor DeSantis was allegedly wrong because he wanted to stop abortion at five or six weeks. For those issues, he's disqualified from my support as a Christian leader and a pastor. Here's the thing. What does Kerry Gordon want? What does the Bible demand? What does God's law say? We should stop murdering babies, period. So there's no question in my mind that Trump is precisely the kind of politician who insincerely manipulated his own naive supporters during past elections to incorrectly believe that he shared the real premise of what it means to be pro-life. He does not share that premise. He is therefore not pro-life. He's willing to move calendar dates and then you can kill the baby. That's what he's willing to do. That's the hard, cold truth. I am reaching for brains here. I am calling upon Christians who fear Almighty God to stop making excuses for his willful public and private sins and hold the former president accountable for what comes out of his mouth for once. If you're struggling to find an alternative candidate, I'm here to help you. Former President Trump claims that the heartbeat bill in Florida went too far. I'm saying it didn't go far enough. So which of these men, on the one hand, President Trump, on the other, Governor DeSantis, which of these men is genuinely a pro-lifer? Do either of these men really believe the premise of abolition? Do either of these men really believe that life begins at conception? That's the question I had to get answered. 
And so to answer that question, uh, that was my primary motive when I invited the governor and his wife, Casey, to come to my home for dinner. I said, you know, take a break from the campaign trail, come over to my house, I'll grill you a steak. And as a pastor in Sioux City, Iowa, um, I'm somewhat of a public figure, whether I want to be or not. And I realize I need to try to obtain an answer to that question because I don't like incremental bills. And I didn't know if the governor and his wife would bother with subjecting themselves to my scrutiny, but they came into my house and they allowed me to discuss so many issues at the heart of a biblical worldview. But I'm gonna focus on the most important existential crisis of our time, the ongoing American Holocaust. So let's just stick with this issue. And I, I'm really pleased to tell you, Governor DeSantis and Florida's First Lady believe in personhood and equal protection. They really do. They remind me of myself 20 years ago. I used to accept that methodology. We can regulate abortion out of existence. I wasn't committing a sin by doing that. In my heart of hearts, I believed it was the only way to win. I believed it was the only way to end the Holocaust. And uh, I've just come to a different position. Now. I don't I don't agree with it. I don't believe in it. But what I need to know is, do you share my premise? And so if I was a governor, would I sign a heartbeat bill? No, uh, I would not undermine my own premise. I would tell them, you bring me a bill that stops killing babies. Life begins at conception. Bring me a bill that acknowledges that reality and I will sign it and we'll stop abortion. And for all the people out there that say that can't be done, go look at Mississippi. Mississippi did a lot better job on that. They still have work to do. They're not done. But I'm just saying, um, I'm a prohibitionist. I don't think we should regulate rape. I don't think we should regulate torture. I don't think we should regulate murder. I think we should prohibit rape. We should prohibit torture. And we should prohibit murder. And if abortion is murder, it should be prohibited. It's very simple, it's very reasonable, and it's logical. If I told you that I, I want to regulate rape, and you can only rape a woman if you have a clean facility, if you have a proper rape license, and only on Saturdays between two and five, you would say it was an imbecile and you want me thrown out of the room. But this is exactly what you're all doing when you talk about regulating the murder of unborn children, right? And we're just so used to it. I think it's affected our brains. I don't think our brains work right anymore. So my brain didn't used to work right. God helped me. I saw the light. I repented. I've become a personhood abolitionist. I'm one of those radicals, those unreasonable radicals that says stop killing children. The thing is, like I said before, I'm not angry at anybody for having a wrong methodology. I just have to know in their heart of hearts, what do they really believe? And I'll tell you this, I, I really think that Governor DeSantis in his heart of hearts is just like I used to be. He wants so badly to end abortion. He's the real deal. He's not like a Donald Trump. He's not just here to troll to get votes. That's my conclusion. His methodology is different from mine, but they truly believe that it begins at conception. He realized he made mistakes on the COVID shutdowns, overstepped boundaries, but as soon as he saw the error, he backed everything up and he made corrections and he took a lot of flack for that. The COVID era, pandemic, whatever you wanna call it, that was the, the most miserably, poorly handled crisis in the history of the United States. It was an absolute tragedy. They just systematically threw out every amendment to the United States Constitution, and the government acted like lawless thugs. A lot of these governors in America went full-on Chinese commie, trampling all over the oath that they swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States. Shame on all of them. But at least this guy realized he made mistakes and he corrected his mistakes. I gotta give him that. I wish he hadn't made the mistakes, I'll be honest. But he acknowledged that he made them. Praise God for that. Uh, maybe someday the governor will have the epiphany that I did on abortion and realize that the methodology of regulating something that's barbaric is really displeasing to God. We've got to take a different, fresh approach and get back to the truth.
Governor DeSantis meets the following qualifications for leadership as outlined in Exodus 18.21 of the Bible. Number one, he fears God. Number two, he's clearly able to do the job for which he has been chosen. Number three, he is not a covetous man. He's not motivated by dirty money. I have no reason to believe that he would accept a bribe. And then fourthly, he has a reputation among the people who know him best as a truth teller. These are, these are the minimum qualifications that a Christian must demand before they put someone in power. And requiring a candidate to meet that minimum plumb line is essential for choosing all leaders, but it's not a stamp of human perfection. It does not guarantee that the human who meets the standard before they're given power is always going to remain faithful and consistent after they enter office. You got King Jehu in the Bible, for example. He probably met the minimum standard, but he made a mess out of some things. No one who fails to meet the standard up front should ever be promoted to power. That's what a standard is, right? We have a standard because everybody's imperfect, and some people are too imperfect to be given power. So I prayed for President Trump a lot. I didn't want him to do bad things. And he did some good things, and I appreciate that. But he also did some bad things, and the worst thing that he ever did, in my opinion, besides mishandling the COVID shutdowns and letting tyranny reign in America, unmitigated, and then giving Fauci an award at the end of all of that mess, unreal, and then still unwilling to acknowledge that he was wrong. That's a huge problem, but this is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is he made it really clear to me he's not truly pro-life. He just wanted votes. He just wanted to exploit people to get votes so he could get elected. And he's gone as far to lecture other people. If you want to win, you're going to have to do what I'm doing. That's betrayal to me. So I sincerely hope this helps you as you prepare for your vote during Iowa's first in the nation presidential caucus on January 15th, coming up here in a couple of weeks.